um, I'll, I'll introduce really Jeff. Good. All right, so how many of you watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> how many of you saw the finale? I won't, I won't do any spoilers here. Oof. I won't do any spoilers here, but uh, I'm a big fan. I'm also a fan of The Walking Dead. The reason why I only ask that question is, you know, when you watch a show and maybe it's been going on for a while and they say previously on, right? Well, previously, last week, uh, Jenna was talking to us about 90 days to double your business. And when they do the previously on, they talk about some of the most important things. 90 days to doubling your business is a challenge. But the, thing, the most important thing from last week's episode that you should take into this week's episode, from my opinion, is that you should, the, the first part of it was talking about uh, in your 90 day challenge, why you're doing what you're doing. 90 days to doubling your business, she talked about last time was, was a lot about what does that mean to you, right? Remember we taught, she talked about that with us. So, so this now is an opportunity to take, continue on, pick up from where we left off. I'm sure she'll connect some dots there as well and move forward for the rest of the presentation. This is a, a, a encore performance. Uh, actually it's a, Additional performance. Yeah, additional. It's not encore. Yeah, it's not really encore. So it's because we're we're not going to go over that, but but we're going to take the re hopefully complete the ninety days here, right? Yeah. Okay. Second so half moves faster. Jenna is awesome marketing, um, incredible resource. If you haven't had an opportunity to to work with her one on one or figure out, you need to do that. So without any further ado, let's welcome Jenna Apgar. Yeah. Uh, Dave, if you'll make sure the people who like. Rayan brought hers back, but some people yeah, didn't. No, I need one because you forgot. Mine's tacked on my. Yeah, I just ordered mine. Just tacked on. Um, and for those who missed it, who wasn't here last week? Oh. I know the new ones. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um, that one was a packed house. I covered a lot. My goal was actually to cover all 90 days, and even David looked at me, he's like, yeah, it's not happening. Um, but I did what Sean told me to do, and I told stories so that each one of um, the first half would resonate more, but I do feel like that- And you did great. I feel like that, that part was more important because if you don't understand what doubling your business really means to you, and you don't understand the foundations of why you're there and why that aspect, those aspects of business are so vital, then it's really, the rest of the, rest of the stuff is just tools, right? Exactly. Tools to accomplish it. So um, what's the little brief overview in Game of Thrones? <laughs> First week is really making sure you do believe in yourself, in the concept, um, and know what that means specifically to you. Personal foundations, um, if you don't know where your goals are at, if you don't know where the target's at, you can shoot all the arrows or guns you want. It's really ineffective. I'm just gonna have a bunch of holes in my walls. Hit the big red wall, is that a target enough? <laughs> um, business foundations, um, I've never been one for doing all the business foundations that the SBA, oh, go build a business plan, go get your business cards and your logos. I mean the actual business foundations um, that actually make you money. Um, that are a little bit more important to getting you off the ground. You can always go work backwards once you kind of know what's going on. The art of the offer, um, that's where all too many times that people just say, here, buy my stuff, come use my services, and they don't understand what an offer or a process looks like. Building initial awareness, um, I feel like that's where a lot of people are at, even though they don't have the foundation, they keep on trying to drag more birds in the door. They don't keep their customers though, and so they end up struggling continuously with awareness because they can't keep customers. And then we finished off with engagement, which is kind of where Sean is really great at telling those stories and understanding A, how you got from point A to point B. Papers falling everywhere, just kick those under the curb. <laughs> um, but how your clients, if you drew a bridge, a map, a whatever, of where your clients are right now and where they would like to be, what does that bridge look like? <laughs> um, and then moving on to subscription, I just heard Sean talking about it with, um, I forgot your name. Michael. Michael. 
Um, you're new, I'm sorry. I try. Names are not my, my forte here. Um, but subscription is going to be where you actually get permission to email, text, Facebook message. I, I don't care what, but that you have permission to do so. If you just start, um, somebody was asking, can't I just put their phone number into my send system and send them a text message? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have my phone number personally and send me a text message. If it's all business and you don't have permission, uh, it's not gonna be so good if you keep on sending me. I have someone who actually comes here very often and um, who's not here today, and he keeps on sending me Facebook messages about all his opportunities. I'm just like, seriously? Like you're in my private Facebook message. Like you could totally do this on LinkedIn. I would be okay that on LinkedIn because I feel like LinkedIn is like where you hustle. This is my private Facebook. What are you doing? That's, that's, that might even be more close to me than my text message at this point because I'm getting spam in my text message. Um, but the first one that you really need to do is make sure you have some core functional pages. So this actually gets into the act, what do you have to build? So this is like the geeky stuff that nobody wants to deal with. Um, for the purpose of the 90 uh, day challenge that we'll take people through the summer, it's, it's what you gotta do. It's the pages that you have to include. If you're gonna do any kind of paid advertising, you have to have a privacy policy. You have to have terms and conditions. Um, it's really good to have something like a 40, was it 401 or 404 page? 404, where if somebody gets the address wrong, it takes them to a page. Why do you care? Um, Why well, you don't want to use the system one? And if they land on your 404 page, wouldn't it be nice to make them an offer there? Or redirect them to some of your best material. These are the pages that you cannot really build the other ones without having these. Um, it, depending on what some of you sell, if you're in the real estate business, you have to have Trek and bro brokerage what is it, PDFs, I think that I have to put on there all the time. You might have terms and conditions of your own sell. So you, if you're working in social media, you might say that you know these are our guarantee policies. This is what we mean by our revision. This is how many mm -hmm. posts we promise if something is consistent. Or you might even say, here's the contract, if you have to refer back to your contract. You're gonna have to have some of these pages that are just those dull pages that have to be done. Everyone understand that one? Mm -hmm. Everyone's super excited about a 404 page? Yay! How many people in here have a list? One, two, three, four, five, sort of. Um, how many people have them in a CRM? With permission to email them. Yay, some people. Um, building your list is really critical. If you are pixeling people and you're counting on that for you know, some retargeting traffic, that's really cool. But it can't be enough because then what happens after 180 days or 365 or when you've exhausted the list you uploaded into your custom audience, you don't own it. What if Facebook gets in really big trouble mm -hmm. and all of a sudden gets broken up or bankrupt? There was a time MySpace was cool and we couldn't picture anything else. Facebook could go that way. Google could go that way. You own your list. You can take it from CRM to CRM. You can take it from an Excel spreadsheet. You can keep it in your Google Drive. Wherever, whatever, as long as you can download it into a CSV or some kind of Excel file, you own your list and you have gotten, in theory, hopefully, permission to message them. I love mini chat. Guess what? You don't own that. You can't pull the information. It's cool for making things seamless, but guess what? Facebook just decided to change the rules on that starting June or July 1st. You're very limited on what you can do. So even if you did dive into there and start building a list in mini chat, rules completely changed. And now what? So if all you were doing was being dependent on something like mini chat, where are you left now? Very, very angry subscribers. That's what you have. Um, so building your list is going to be important and that's going to be getting into kind of what some of we're talking here. Um, first things first, you have to have assets, simple things like your email header. It could be where you want to direct them. In email assets, it doesn't have to be hard. You do have to have a means to email them. You have to have some kind of CRM. Um, you can use MailChimp. I'll cry a little bit deeply. Um, not my favorite. That's a whole other conversation. But you do have to have some asset as a way to deliver email, even if that is just your outlook. I suppose if your list is only 10 people, 
it could work it's a little time consuming but you'll find the assets to do that start at nine bucks 25 bucks they don't have to get complicated um, but you do have to have something are you gonna tell stories do you need to document a few of your stories to get going do you need to document your processes that you would like to take people through what is your customer value journey that would probably be a good one to know um, the other one is you're gonna need very first email sequence you're gonna need is indoctrination anybody know what indoctrination means yes one of you? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to go with him because I feel like you're going to give me the marketing version. <laughs> and that was said with pure love. It's a way for them to, to know what they're going to get after they get you. Oh, that was still the marketing version. Um, anybody gone to college and done like the pre-trip in the summer where they completely indoctrinate you into their community cult? Any a &M grads? Anybody know how? Okay, nobody! I went through business school indoctrination. Yeah, <laughs> business school indoctrination. Legal school had, legal school, law school had indoctrination. My sister went to UT and they took her for three days onto campus. She lived in the dorms. They gave her all sorts of t shirt and swag and pennants. And just in her head, they taught her fight songs and all sorts of UT habits or I don't know. You, you can yeah. tell, obviously, whatever. Um, Aggie household. a and even worse. <laughs> you are so heavily indoctrinated. I have literally been shopping at the farmer's market in Dallas. I picked out all these plants that you had, those pallets, all situated. I'm like, okay, here's all the ones I need for this garden. Here's all the ones I had them all picked out. And then, unbeknownst to me, the guy across the street is an A&M grad. Sees my husband's giant gold ring glistening. A guy, it's a good 200 feet. He just puts his finger up in there, taps it. My husband sees it. It's like, no, babe, we have to go shopping over here. Wait, what? No, no, I have everything picked out. But he's the A&M grad. Anybody ever lost somebody to a competitor? Oh, yeah. Of course. We've got two financial guys in here today. Mm -hmm. I think last time we had four or five, right, David? Mm -hmm. Depends on the day. Mm -hmm. What if you had an indoctrination sequence, a sequence that told your stories, that told what you could offer, that told your client's stories, that gave testimonials, that educated, that was so deep that people would cross the road having done all their shopping to move over to you? If Rayanne, if I had given Rayanne such a great indoctrination sequence, which my bad, I didn't, she knows me really well, sees another business owner about to hire another digital marketer, finds out, and she's like, oh, no, 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 we need to cross the road. You can't go with that person. They're an unknown. Does that make sense on why you need an indoctrination sequence? This does not have to be hard. I've made them that only go one email. I've also made them that go 12 months and one ridiculous one that went five years. Why? Because the selling process was five years. And you wanted to stay in touch and they were never going to write one email a week or a month or whatever. So we just built it into the indoctrination sequence. Keep on wanting to like change slides. We're not there yet. Second one. You guys were talking about some kind of lead magnet, PDF download, ebook, piece of information, video, something valuable for free, right? There needs to be an email sequence for that too that says, hey, here's the thing that I promised that I would send you with all the additional information. If somebody asks you just to send something, and let's just assume this is all done by Outlook and not even fancy, you're probably just going to type up something really quick, toss the PDF in there and send it off, right? What if you had a canned response? We're assuming for the copy paste people in the room. My husband actually did this for his law firm for a very long time before we got away from it. Or you had a sequence that said, it was really nice to meet you. Here's who I am. Here's how I can help you. Here's the PDF. I've already doctored the PDF so that it has more information about me, how to take next steps, stories in them. Everything has been engineered to take you through more indoctrination, more stories to build you 
closer and more into the community and take you further down the customer value journey to get you from subscription to the next point. In your case, from getting your email, sending that PDF and getting an appointment, right? Gain logic fear is just the three ways that humans make decisions. So I cannot let a gain logic fear because typically when they get that download or they get that opportunity, they're making a decision about you very quickly. And so we're playing on, hey, what are you going to gain? Which doesn't work very well, be perfectly honest, but it's a lot nicer. Um, logic, there's about 10% of the population that actually does use logic to make decisions. Any of my logic people in here? I'm a logic person. Two. I would have thought you were logic, you're not logic. I just did Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> and the last one is fear. Oddly enough, I find this one, this is the email that if my clients are sending it out, it's the one that gets the most, you know, commentary, like, how dare you? It's also the one that gets the most sales. Sit there and tell them what they stand to lose if they don't hire you or at least somebody like you. What happens when they die without a retirement, without any savings, and their wife still has another 20 years to live? What happens when you've got three kids that need to go to college? You make, this is actually a problem in Frisco that I'm learning right now, and part of the reason I was doing this and changed it up some, there are kids who their parents make too much money to get any government help, any grants, any assistance whatsoever. They are down to the personal loans, but they have never saved for college. Mm -hmm. So you have kids in Frisco from parents who are white collar, college, edu college educated, who make good money, living half million plus dollar homes, who cannot afford to send their kids to college. That is a story that would make Really good fear email, I would think, depending, assuming that, you know, you've got parents. And then always, of course, with each one, mission review. Um, as I told the group the last time, even doctors make tremendously less mistakes and kill less people when they have a checklist. Checklists are good, right? And if you don't finish on Sunday, then you don't get to play. No Game of Thrones binging for you. Week eight, convert those leads to sales. Okay, so you've got some people on your list. How many of them convert? Anybody can throw out, a, anybody know how many leads, a percentage that they convert to sales? On average. Sure, on average. On average, it's anywhere between two to 5% if you're lucky. For you. I would not say that for everyone <coughs> because I know companies who can do it much higher yeah. than that. Significantly, I have people who will cringe if they don't convert 30 at least. So, but she knows her number. Does anyone else know their number? 58. 58 from leads to sales? Well, it also depends on the medium because my conversion rate from email is lower than my conversion rate from video, so it depends on the medium. Knowing both is good, right? Yeah. Knowing the indoctrination. Indoctrination helps. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've actually loved for like every, this side of the room I feel like knows that I've gone to Kartra, is I can tell what my conversion rate is on every single email. Mm -hmm. I can tell what it is on sequence versus broadcast emails. I can tell what it is on every single page, every single affiliate. I can tell you every number I have for every person running through. That's cool, That's awesome. right? Um, but we need to convert those leads to sales. And the first thing is first is just like the chef in the kitchen. It's better to get all your tools together and all your food together before you start cooking. Because if not, then you've got to go chop onions and the garlic is burning. Has anybody eaten burnt garlic? We've got to run to the store. You really kind of have to like ditch the whole pan and like turn the vents and open the windows up. So to prevent issues, gather up your assets. The assets you're going to need here are a little bit more intensive. Um, we're going to need lots of images. How many people in here have a, a product or service that cannot be seen? Financial services, consulting, mm -hmm. your black box, people can't touch it. You have to make it touchable, visually touchable. That's why when you go to buy, um, I still think this is ridiculous. I will go to buy an application on the internet or a training on the internet 
and it shows a box. Or anybody here old enough to buy the box when software came in a box? They still show a box and they will still show DVDs fanned out. I'm like, my computers don't even, they can't even take that round disc looking thing. Like my daughter looked at it, she was like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that have to do with software, mom? Like, that was college stuff. I remember when it was an 11 inch flat floppy disc. Um, but you do have to visualize it somehow. That could even just mean making it look like it's a book, making it look like it's a PDF, making it look like it's a person on a computer screen and there's your graph. Somehow visualize specifically what it is that you are selling so somebody's mind can visually touch it. Because when they can visually touch something, it has more perceived value. That goes from your lead magnet or anything you sell Making sure you have pretty pictures of yourself. Anybody have a pretty picture of themselves that they like, that they're happy with? Mm -hmm. Anybody have the same pretty picture with no background on it that's transparent and PNG? That's all the computer people are like, I got that, yay! And everyone's else like, a what? PNG file, because if you have a PNG file that's transparent, you can have any back, you can be on the beach, you can be on a blue website screen, you can be on whatever you want, and it makes it a lot easier to use. So setting up assets, and there's different assets depending on what it is you're doing. Copy bullets are nice. Um, what else is good on the web page to get going? Any videos. Videos are good to have depending on what you're selling. Your entry point offer. So that's part of the customer value journey. To get the subscription, we've offered some kind of lead magnet that magnetizes our crowd to us. An entry point offer, um, where do people shop? Favorite stores? Favorite stores? Yeah. Okay, gosh. Several. Uh, um, so. Nordstrom's. Oh, Nordstrom's is dangerous. <laughs> Patrick? Home goods. Oh, that one's even more dangerous. Target. Target's bad too. Costco. All four of those Costco's, Nordstrom, Michael's, Target, Home Goods. What does every single one of them have by the checkout line? The, the impulse items. Target even learned to put them right at the front when you walk in. There's a whole section that's like one to five dollars. They're all POS items. I heard someone say that. It's all garbage, but it's all stuff that we just want to go there and look. Oh my God, it's only a dollar. Oh my gosh, it's only five. Uh, there's a competing item over there for four dollars, and this one's five. And how it's better quality. But this one's at the front. It's got pretty glitter on it or something, right? Mm -hmm. Those impulse items. That is your entry point offer. The entry point offer is going to be time or money. For my financial guys in the room and the mortgage guys, that's almost always going to be an appointment. You should still find a way to bribe them into the appointment. It can be a little bit of money. So we built a funnel um, for Scott this week or the last week, something like that, where he sold his book, his $30 book, but it was under $10. It is something you can trip over. It is something highly enticing. It should have more value than it is, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, it's only $9 or it's only for some of the bigger ticket items. It can be a $500 product. All that it matters is it's something your client can trip over. Why $4.95? Because a lot of people in corporate world don't have to ask for permission under $500. They just told make a make a decision. How many people have to ask their wife or husband to buy something $9? <laughs> That's the point though. You don't have to ask permission. It is just you see it, you don't even think about it. So like my price bracket if it's under $20, she's like just grab it. Do you need it? Whatever. Just just get it. I'm not going to sit here and quibble over $20. Somebody was like Last week was like, oh, I don't have change for a 20, like, do you have like a square reader or something for the $2? No. Just next time you come. I'm not going to quibble over $2. This is not important to me, right? So what is the thing that you can offer that is an entry point between the free item and the item that you actually want to sell, your core item? Gain Logic Fear gets them to that. Indoctrination helps them move them along and points them to your different lead magnets and entry point offers. Get them in time. Do not, I know like the financial people are limited. They're not allowed to bribe as much. I don't want your consultation. 
I don't want your call to get to know me and my business. I know it's a sales call. Give me a good reason to want to take you up on that. The other thing that we need to work on is your onboarding process. You should have a page on your website for your onboarding. One, it makes my pretty little landing pages easier to track so you can start getting those conversion numbers at every step of the process. Um, so on the other side of this board, you flip it over, it's got each step. In theory, you should be able to know the conversion process in between each of the eight steps. When you know that, you know exactly how much you can afford to put in at the very beginning to fill the pipeline because you know how much is coming out the back end. One of those is your onboarding. It costs a lot of money to acquire a customer. It's the most expensive, most difficult, most time consuming aspect in marketing and sales. Why not keep them and make them happy and have them writing great reviews? and I don't know, promoting you and being that great referral partner. The best way to do that is to have a specific onboarding process. Hey, you should be expecting an email. Here's another note, if you have any issues, email me here, call me here, join this Facebook group. Hey, the best way to get the most out of what I do is to buy this object. Whatever your onboarding process means, from the point somebody hires you, to the ideal situation, what needs to happen in between there? Document that, put it in the page, put it in an email sequence, make sure that you encourage the client to go through. So a couple of the agency owners, and I was like, how could I do that? I'm not sure I wanna go through the process. They actually reward their clients for taking certain actions. So if they just build funnels, they will send their clients a care package when they spend their first thousand dollars in Facebook ads. Because if you have, you can build the most beautiful funnel if they send no traffic, it's pointless. So they literally gamify the system of making sure to see the funnel works. Does that make sense to anybody? Gamifying your own onboarding, making sure your clients succeed, making sure you can turn them into testimonials. Then you kind of need a sales page. Sales pages are good. Anybody want to sell their core offer? Sales pages are specific. We were building one for Scott today to go with his book funnel, walking through a 12 step long form sales letter. It's basically just the 12 steps that people need to go through psychologically to hit the buy button every single time. By somebody I keep on calling Mr. Frey, but it's Mr. Fry, even though it's spelled Mr. Frey, whatever, John Frey, John Fry. You've got to sit there and tell them, hey, this is who it's for calling out the audience, because that's usually the first objection is, is this for me? I've almost gotten tired of hearing that in digital marketing. Hmm, is a website for you? Are sales good for you? Is a lead list good for you? Yeah, it's for you. But I sell supplements. Did I stutter? But I'm a consultant. Did I stutter? It's a process and a framework. How you get there doesn't matter. The framework works. It's kind of worked for a couple hundred years. You need some kind of sales page. Even if you don't close a sale online, you need something that is telling them what you offer. If they have to ask you, then you've not done your job right. If they have to ask you, is this for me? You haven't done your job right, tweak it. If they have questions, if you get the same objection and you have to answer it on the phone every single time, then maybe you should change your sales page. If you have no, anybody here not have testimonials, recommendations, LinkedIn, something? Anybody, nobody, everybody's got something? Every, anybody got less than two? You. Are you allowed? So I know a couple of financial yeah, advisors, they don't allow it. I might have you on all out there. It's a very dicey situation, like what they can say. Uh, yeah. They can say that, oh, they did something really good for them or anything like that. Again, discuss how much money you transfer over. It's a very delicate subject. They can't say, hey, they moved my 401k over here to Roth IRA or saved me $30,000 in taxes. <laughs> so bad for your compliance. Like, just take like barbed wire and like wrap it around. Well, it's because a lot of people have misused with that earlier and those rules come into place because of... Always the people who mess it up, <laughs> yeah. right? At this point, we need to tie it all together. You have your pages 
you need another email series to get somebody from the EPO to the core offer, right? You got an EPO page, you have a core offer page, move them on over Ascension. They met with you. The sequence should start with, hey, thanks for meeting with me. Here's all the additional information you need. Here's additional links that would be helpful. And guess what those links are gonna have? Something to take them to buy, right? Additional emails to get them to move over. Review it, make sure you get it all done. One of the phases that most people don't go through is the excite phase. I think Sean said it when he was up here teaching, and I've never actually heard this before, but people buy because they want to brag about their purchase. They want to brag about working with you. They want to brag to their friends and take a picture on Facebook and have something where everyone's like, oh my God, it's so exciting, right? What is excite? It could be a t-shirt. I still do not, can't wrap my head around the fact that a size extra large men's t-shirt made of really scratchy material somehow excites people, but I have seen people mosh and roll over old people and children to get a freaking t-shirt or a blinky little ring. What can you give your clients to make them excited? I get the financial advisors, you're limited, but you can go over your material. You can audit them somehow. You can give them some kind of quick win that makes them excited. So when they go back and they tell their spouse, because at the core offer, you might need a spouse's buy-in, why it's important that they go with you. Why is it important that they move specifically on with you and not a competitor? Success needs. Kind of going back to the onboarding, when you're gonna need an email onboarding, what do they need to be successful? I kind of jumped ahead and went on to that. It's cool to tell them on a web page. It's cool to put it back through the email, but people have several different learning styles. The person who's going to read, that there's gonna be a person that needs to see it. Make them a video. It is probably the most important video sequence that you will have. Not the game logic fear, not the sales videos, it's the onboarding so that you have the least amount of problems, the least amount of returns, the least amount of turnover. Make them a video series. Film it. This is not hard. It doesn't have to be hyper professional. If you need to use the studio and you're a member, come do so. Get a decent background. Sean gets all fancy with his green screen, got beaches hanging out in the background. But film a couple of videos. The editing is not hard. Ray Ann has learned to edit videos like an expert adding video that's not her own, adding text, sound. She's gotten pretty darn good at it. Edit them, add it to your email sequence. Video is kind of awesome and it's not hard. Anyone in here have a cell phone? <laughs> what, no cell phones for you guys? Y'all should all have your hands up, y'all are sleeping. You have a cell phone, you have all the equipment you need to film an onboarding sequence. Maybe get a pop socket to make your life easier. What are those, 10 bucks now that the patent is being enforced? $14 to get a full stand, not that one. But you know, something similar. Free traffic, anyone here like free traffic? Of course, right? Yeah, it's only so good, but it's a good start to test stuff, right? Um, first and foremost, you should have some kind of tracking code. So Kartra does it all internally. You can use pretty links, UTMs, wrap them up at bit.ly, Google links, but have some kind of tracking so you at least know how many people are clicking on your links is helpful. If nothing else, if you can go in and set up what's called Google Tag Manager, you're like on level 100, right? If you can start putting in your Google Analytics, a Facebook pixel, mm -hmm. any CRM tracking, keep, yeah, yeah, don't put too many in there, but you know, put at least the Facebook pixel and the Google Analytics into your Google Tag Manager. Drop the Google Tag Manager link code in all of your web pages would be awesome. You can get, you know, really tricky, tricky with some like replug and start pixeling people for absolutely everything, but that's a tale for a different day. But some tracking code to get you started, so at least you have something. Um, the link tracking I kind of covered, um, pretty links. You can add some UTM that was like UTM.io and do a shortener that's even customized. Bitly does this, Google does this. Um, Google Business, that's gonna be your easiest one because if someone actually goes and searches you, you should have a Google Business 
It's the most complicated one to set up, but do it right. Google a lot how to do it and Google will give you links to make it easier. But set it up, they're gonna send you paper, you gotta put in a code, get it set up right, they will be the new Yelp. They are taking on Yelp directly. So you want to make sure you have some reviews there if you can, and you wanna make sure your business hours, your business address, phone numbers all squared away. Um, SEO in 2019. Interesting topic. I will usually tell people it falls into four sections. Is that four, right? Um, this is going to be your social media signals. This is why you can't leave out social media. It is going to be the meta, you know, techie type stuff, but stuff like Yoast SEO makes that easy. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have original authority content, which is hard to write and super fun, but it does work. And you're also going to have traffic and traffic that actually stays more than a minute or hits another page. However, <laughs> there are limitations. I did some searches. Every single thing that's competitive or worthwhile, there are nearly a billion pages on the internet competing for it. Mm -hmm. A billion. So either you have to spend a week or more writing each piece of content and promoting it on social media and make sure that it's all coded right and it's site mapped right and you're sharing it everywhere and you're driving specific traffic to it or you're not even remotely competitive. So SEO in 2019, it should probably not be your primary focus. If you think SEO is gonna save your tushy, got another thing coming. Um, pillar post, I do still recommend a pillar post. It's nice for SEO, but your pillar post should be how you get your clients from point A to point B. It took me a week to write mine. It quadrupled my traffic in one week since posting it. If I wrote one of those every week, that'd probably be really cool. I just don't think that would be the payoff would be what I want. Pay traffic. Who's tried Facebook ads? Um, don't boost from the page. <laughs> Actually go into ad manager, use the Facebook pixel, maybe transfer to a business Facebook account so you can start utilizing the custom audiences because they have moved that over to business manager only. Don't be afraid of it. Pop out your phone with the little pop socket that's overpriced for a piece of plastic. Film. Remember we kind of went through the onboarding ones? Use a Facebook pixel and give those to your existing audience so that they know your stories, so they know how they can best do things. This is less than $5 a day. You have to put a $5 a day budget per ad, but if it's to a tiny audience, you'll never touch $5. There'll be days you don't touch 30 cents small audience you're not going to do it but using Facebook ads for cold audience using it for your warm audience to get them from the lead magnet to the EPO from the EPO to the core offer from the core offer to your more expensive products or affiliate offers or partners that's where good money is your first ad campaign does not need to be hard download your list upload it into Facebook boom first ad anybody tried Google ads they're helpful. They really are for a cold audience because somebody is actively looking for what you sell and actively making a selection and they will not go past page one. They might, 60% might skip over the ads, but you do it in conjunction with some decent SEO on one page, you'll still rank. YouTube, anybody YouTube? No one ever says YouTube. That is where to be, it's easy. You just only have five seconds to get their attention. So boom, boom, boom. It has literally changed the movie industry and how they make trailers. You'll notice five, first five seconds are really good. Final touches, this is where, I'm gonna skip most over because this is like in-person networking. I feel like everyone in here has heard that. Speaking engagements is more complicated, launch partners. I will say two things out of this one. Automate what you can once you've proven it works. And two, you need daily, weekly, monthly goals. Mm -hmm. And before David kicks me off, <laughs> how many people in here could write down 100 ideal customers? I'm not saying you would have absolutely every single piece of their information or their, you have permission to email them, but you know who 100 people you would like to work with are. Okay. Write those down. Get their information. I know it's creepy, but there's enough free stuff on the internet. You can find them. Reach out to them individually with heart, telling a story, and do something special for them. 
you will close sales that way. You can fill up your calendar for a year. If you want help building this and you actually want to hear what it takes to actually do each one of these 90 days, we do have a special, that code gets you half off. For anybody who does do it, if you have a college, not college, high school, I guess college, or you want to be certified in digital marketing, I will take you through the process this summer. That will be the only one I offer that. And we'll build you out all the hard pages you need for your web page. Any questions? Silence. When does that start? June 3rd. June 3rd. Yeah, on Monday. Awesome. And I, I seem to remember from last time, Jenna, that, that um, there's a limited number of those. That you, there's So it's eight. So yeah. so it's not an unlimited. So if you're watching down this to online, six, so. down to six, actually. So, um, so amazing deal. This is a done-for-you thing, right? I mean, you're going to do it. I still gonna, want them to learn how to do it. Right. Because I want them to learn how to edit it. Mm -hmm. But all the core pages they need will be done. But they, I'm not going to drive their traffic. Not to put their ads together. Yeah, it's not an ongoing management, yeah. but it's basically getting the, show them how to do it, getting everything put together. And how, yeah. And and um, so this is and this is over ninety days. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay, just making sure that it's clear to everybody. Awesome. Let's give her another hand. This is, that's, she always there's, there's always a lot of, of of work and effort, and and I so appreciate everything that she's put into this and put into this group. Uh, any other thank yous that we have? The last two things we do are thank yous and any other announcements. So, but the first one is thank yous. Any any thank yous? Anybody? Just raise your hand. I'm not going to go around the room. Yes. Thank y'all for having me for the first time. Thanks, Jenna. Learned thank you. Thanks for coming. I, again, it's uh, I thank everybody here because you've made an investment. You've shared something that's priceless, which is your time, because you can't get it back, right? So I always appreciate people that show up uh, so that we can serve each other. Uh, any other? Thank you. Well, thank Ran. you to Jenna for hosting and all of her Absolutely. Come in and David, you for um, sharing some insights into my teenager. Yeah, one of the powers of this group is everybody here, in every group that I'm in, but everybody here has something that they can give and something that you can get. And so I, I encourage you when you're in a group like this, take the opportunity, ask some questions, if, if, if check in, be present. And if you ask some questions and you talk about things, you might just have, we might actually just stumble into something that could be life changing or could be at least fundamentally impactful. So I really appreciate.